I trust that the foregoing explanations added to those which are yet to follow will be sufficient excuse for my not dwelling on the vulgar and inflated interrogatory with which the author closes the attack more immediately leveled at myself. Sir Hudson Lowe would have doubtless, according to his own and this writer's notions of equity, been fully justified in even doing more than he has to blast my character and wound my feelings. But thank heaven, there is such a tribunal as public opinion in England, and having been driven to the alternative of appealing to it, I am perfectly prepared to stand or fall by its decision. In his 68th page, the author of the facts observes, as for the bulletins issued about Bonaparte's health to deceive the prince and people of England, I confess, I never heard of them. This miserable subterfuge is evidently the last resource of a person conscience of having been guilty of underhand practices and solicitous to throw off imputations of a nature not to be easily extenuated. At Plantation House, the subject was doubtless rather irksome and not likely to have been often made the theme of discussion by means of the transposition of persons, dates, and circumstances. His instructor has misrepresented to him that he knew what he knew to be true by describing the memorandum upon Sir Thomas Reed's letter written and sent to the governor on the 25th of April, 1818, as having been applied to Dr. Verley, an assistant surgeon of the artillery, and attending the sick of his own detachment in Jamestown and who was not sent to Longwood by Sir Hudson Lowe until the 25th of July of the same year, that is to say, 89 days after the memoranda had been sent to the governor. The true history of this extraordinary transaction is as follows. In 1816, Sir Hudson Lowe ordered me to make out, whenever he thought proper, bulletins of the state of Napoleon's health, from whose knowledge he desired that they might be concealed, and which he sometimes caused to be altered. In September 1817, Napoleon having fallen seriously ill, bulletins were made daily by Sir Hudson Lowe's order, and Napoleon became acquainted with their formation in the beginning of October through authorized persons. He did not like this practice and thought it was very extraordinary that his private surgeon should be obliged to make bulletins of the state of his complaints unknown to him and informed me that unless I gave my word of honor, I would write no more without having first obtained his consent. For if he was so ill as to render it improper to consult him, that of Count Bertrand, and also that I should leave the originals in the hands of one of his suite, he would receive me no more. I did not like to enter into this engagement without first acquainting Sir Hudson Lowe, who returned an evasive answer and made Napoleon wait a considerable time for a decisive reply. After the latter had been several days without seeing me, Sir Hudson Lowe authorized me to tell him that no more bulletins should be asked for me without first making him Napoleon acquainted with the demand. Some difficulties had presented themselves in the compilation of the bulletins. Sir Hudson Lowe insisted that Napoleon should be styled General Bonaparte in them. After some discussion on this subject, however, Count Bertrand authorized me to drop all titles and to make use of the word patient. This I communicated verbally to Sir Hudson Lowe on the 15th of October, 1817. All difficulties appeared to be removed by this proposal, and as the originals must have been left in Count Bertrand's hands... There could have been no possibility of causing any falsification of them. Sir Hudson Lowe, however, did not approve of this proposal and refused to comply with it. Consequently, no more bulletins were made by me. Sir Hudson Lowe then had recourse to an expedient perfectly consistent with other measures which he had introduced in St. Helena, but which I believe cannot be justified by any principle of probity. He caused surreptitious bulletins to be made and employed for that purpose a surgeon who never saw the patient and who consequently could not be a judge of his complaint, which bulletins were sent to England and the different courts of Europe by Sir Hudson Lowe and by the commissioners of the Allied powers to whom they were furnished by Sir Hudson Lowe from November 1817 until April 1818, at which period... A discovery of the transaction was made to the French by one of the commissioners of the Allied powers from whom Sir Hudson Lowe had kept secret the mysterious nature of the measure 
which he had caused to be adopted, having accidentally sent to General Montalon, we saw in the bulletin this morning that Napoleon was so-and-so. This led to an explanation amongst the parties most interested, and a discovery was made of the expedient which had been adopted by the governor. When I resumed my medical functions at Longwood on the 9th of May, 1818, Napoleon, in order to put a stop to the fabrication of any more bulletins, required that I should make out a report of the state of his health weekly, or oftener if necessary, a copy of which should be given to the governor if he required it. This I immediately communicated to Sir Hudson Lowe, who not only did not require it, but prohibited me from making any written report whatsoever to him, and even sent back those which I wrote to him, compelling me to come to Plantation House whenever he thought proper to send for me, and to make verbal reports in the presence of a witness of his own selection, not failing according to his general custom, to vet his spleen on me whenever the caprice or malice of the moment stimulated him.